and trauma isn't about the event itself, but an internal line that our body has. I call this line the critical line of overwhelm. It's actually a key concept in my new book, The Biology of Trauma. This line determines whether an experience can build us or break us. But an internal line that our body has, this critical line of overwhelm, is the body's calculation of what will be overwhelming and what will be our growth. It will determine whether our body can recover and repair from the impact of stress and trauma, or it will not be able to. Now, this is a mini episode on the larger, longer podcast episode that I published this week, which was on the chronic pain. And chronic pain is a common topic that people have questions about. So I published a podcast episode on that. So you can find that on my website, biologyoftrauma.com podcast and episode 130. It was called Why It's Not Stress That Causes Chronic Pain and what really does. And as we look at chronic pain, we look at what is this body's calculation that will be determining whether we get stuck in chronic pain or not. And as we look at this chronic pain or any other message that the body has that we are not healing, that our mind is not healing, I was actually at the Colorado Integrative Medicine Conference this last weekend in Estes Park, and Tanya was there, and she's a health practitioner. She came up to me after my keynote, and she said, Dr. Amy, I've done years of therapy for my own trauma. I feel like my mind has healed. My thoughts are good. I treat myself well, but my body has not healed. Why not? And Tanya, your question gets to the heart of this crucial line of overwhelm, which is why I wanted to do this miniature episode on that. And if you really want to know more in depth, you'll listen to the longer episode 130. What you're describing is incredibly common, and it reveals why understanding this critical line of overwhelm changes everything about how we approach healing. In my main episode, the podcast episode, I shared how my own chronic shoulder pain wasn't actually from stress, but from my body being stuck in a chronic trauma state. You may have heard the term functional freeze. I know I shared this with you, Tanya, at the Colorado conference, this idea of we are in a chronic trauma state. Let me walk you through what's happening in the body that creates this disconnect between mental understanding and physical responses. First of all, we need to understand something called neuroception. Neuroception is this concept that it is our perception of our nervous system that will determine what state we are in. And the way that I understand neuroception is that it's a dashboard and it constantly is scanning our internal environment as well as our external environment to be able to see, am I safe or how much danger am I in? So as we look at what is this neuroception, this neuroception is a dashboard and it's a dashboard of information. So if we were driving a car, it's where we look at all the settings of the car. How much fuel do I have? How much gas in the tank do I have? How well is my engine running? What are my fluid levels, the oil levels? What is the status of my tires? What's the traction on the road? These are all things that our neuroception is going to be measuring as part of its final decision and perception of, are we in danger or are we safe? And neuroception operates completely below our conscious awareness. It processes information from all of our senses. So it collects information from what is happening outside of us, but it also is monitoring our internal biology, just like in the car, our dashboard is giving us information, not just about the external environment, perhaps the temperature outside, but also our internal environment. How much gas do I have in the fuel tank? 
So it's detecting inflammation, it's detecting hormone levels, it's detecting energy reserves. Most importantly, it also factors in our past experiences. This creates a personalized filter for what determines safety or danger. Let me explain. This personalized filter is like the glasses that we put on. The glasses that we put on are what will tell us uh, in looking at a relationship. Is this relationship likely to be safe or likely to be dangerous? Depends on which glasses you're wearing. If you are wearing glasses that say, this is dangerous, well then, everything will seem dangerous. If you're wearing glasses that say, hey, everything is generally safe, well then everything generally will be safe. So there are different aspects about these uh, filters and our background coming from attachment that will create that idea of safety versus danger in our nervous system. So that this system makes one critical calculation all the time. It's always measuring our current capacity versus the demands that we have current capacity versus the demands that we have. Why is this important for you? This is important for you because oftentimes what's being calculated is that we don't have the capacity for the demands against us. In fact, most of the time, the calculation comes out to say, the demand is really high. You want me to do this. You want me to drive this fast, but I don't have the capacity to do that. This creates the gap. And when there is a gap, then that is when we will go into a trauma biology. This is for our best survival. We'll talk about that in another episode, but this gap is where trauma lies. So in this aspect, we're looking at stress being where my current capacity matches the demands and the gap being when my sense of capacity does not meet up to the demand. And this capacity is largely influenced by our nervous system's perception of our capacity. Not reality, not in reality, how strong are we? How competent are we? How smart are we to figure out a problem? It's measuring based on the past, what has been your ability to navigate hard things and challenges? And our attachment can say, we aren't that capable because there were times in our life when we were powerless and that got programmed into our body without the reset back to safety at that time. There is still the programming that says, I am not as capable as I need to be to meet the demands in my life. And so when we see that intellectually we know that we're safe, our body can still be in danger mode. Your conscious mind is just one level of all three levels that need to be repaired. So your conscious mind says, we're safe. I'm looking around at my life. I have enough money. I have enough safety. I have enough security. We're good. But our body is giving different signals to our nervous system. This may also be in the form of biology, not just our background, our early life or attachment programming that's giving us the filter through which we see everything, but we may have biology that is giving signals of danger to our neuroception. And it's showing up on our dashboard that says, danger, danger, danger. This can come from inflammation. This can come from oxidative stress. This can come from toxins. And my goodness, we live in a toxic world right now. We can't avoid it. We're not supposed to avoid it. We're supposed to be able to clear things out. And we have all of the systems in order to be able to do that. But what if those systems are not working well? What if we are so stressed all the time that our detoxification system is not prioritized because survival is prioritized? And all of this accumulation of our biology is sending signals of danger to our neuroception. And it's showing up on our dashboard and it's saying the best thing for you to do is to be in the trauma state at the moment, be in the shutdown state. 
be in the state of you're just pushing through, but you're not thriving. So I liken it to this car that is our human body. And as we're driving this car, the environment changes minute by minute. We can go through a patch of dry road and then we hit a patch of wet road. That changes the dynamics, that changes our environment. And so it is inside of us. We can be fine one moment and then the next moment we feel a headache coming on. The next moment we've thrown our back out. The next moment we feel exhausted and tired and drained and depleted. How does this happen so fast? Did all of my energy actually get drained and depleted in a second? No, it's the neuroception that is deciding every second, what are all the factors saying about my capacity and the demands against me? Filtered through my attachment and my early life, it is making moment by moment decisions. And this is what will keep the body in a chronic functional freeze or this chronic trauma state and sick and diseased with those patterns of trauma that I talk about in my book, when even though our mind can tell us that we are safe. And so every time that we notice our body having a response, we can know that our neuroception has received more signals of danger than signals of safety. Our neuroception has just received more signals of danger than signals of safety. So that this is how we can learn to work with our body. This is how we can learn to move through things in the moment. We can be able to respond to our body in the moment rather than letting things accumulate and become stuck again. So what are the practical action steps that we can do coming out of, again, the longer podcast episode 130, what are the practical steps that we can do for working with our neuroception? First of all, it's tracking our nervous system states daily. The nervous system journal that I used for myself and continue to use for my biology drama health coaching clients is something that I'm providing with my book. So if you want to pre-order my book, Uh, That would be one way that you could get my nervous system journal. I'm giving it to you. So you can just order the book and you'll have that. And what else? This idea that we can track our nervous system states, not just to be able to know what state we're in, but so that we can shift our state. We can shift our state. One of the most frustrating things for me was becoming aware of my state but not knowing how to shift it, not knowing what to do, not being able to do anything about it yet. It's very frustrating to be aware of something that you don't like and not have the ability to change it. So we want to be able to change our states as we learn to track our states. And as you learn to shift your state, that's what I do in the foundational journey. I teach people how to shift their state Not for long term yet, because that will come with time, but in the short term, how can you shift your state right now in the next 30 seconds, 60 seconds, get your neuroception back to a sense of safe enough. That is when you start to experience all of these changes in your physical health that I'm noticing that people are having because you're spending more time in what I call the calm alive state, parasympathetic, ventral vagal or other words for it. And this is where your whole body is at its healthiest. Your whole body is at its healthiest. Your detoxification system will work best. Your circulation system will work best. Your lymphatic system will work best. Everything is working at its best, which means that you're going to be able to clear out toxins. You're going to be able to clear out that oxidative stress. You're going to be able to make energy in your mitochondria. You're going to be able to have healthy balance of hormones. All of this can only happen when we are in that calm alive state. So looking back on my medical career, this was one of the single most important insights that I had in working with my patients. The best thing that I could do for them to give them the fastest results, no matter what they were coming in with, was to help them learn how to shift their nervous system state. 
learn how to understand what their neuroception was saying. What is this under underground, underneath the surface calculation that's happening so that they can use that and shift that? Because once we learn to shift that, we have gained access really to our subconscious. Our nervous system is our subconscious that drives our thoughts, our emotions, our reactions, our behaviors, and our health symptoms. And so when we can do the shifting of our nervous system, we can actually make the biggest difference, the fastest, because we're working at the very true root cause of it all that our nervous system in our body, not our mind, not our logical brain, our body, our autonomic nervous system has gotten stuck in danger mode. It still sees danger everywhere. And to be able to shift that into calm alive state is going to give me and you the fastest results possible. So that is what I would want to share with you. So Tanya, to answer your question directly, your, your body just hasn't caught up with your mind because repairing the impact of trauma on our biology is part of what allows our neuroception to switch to ventral vagal, switch to parasympathetic, get into that calm and alive state. And this is part of the repair. The repair does need to involve the biology level that will be continuing to give danger signals to your neuroception. It'll show up on your dashboard and your body will say, mind, you can think that we are safe, but I know better. I'm getting danger signals. And these danger signals are coming directly from your own biology. Thank you for joining me for this episode. Again, my book is available for, for order already. Cannot believe it. And I was very honored to have Gabor Mate share the forward, write the forward for this book. And it goes into how does the body experience trauma? How is it different than stress? And a big piece is this neuroception that we're talking about. Why does the body hold on? And what does it actually need? What is it still waiting for that we can give it what it needs and allow it to repair and heal? Thank you for joining me. I'm your host, Dr. Amy, and I will see you on the next podcast episode for the biology of trauma. <laughs>